Hello everybody, it's Ruby here today, and I thought that I would recommend a couple of books that I absolutely loved and I believe fall under speculative fiction genre. Now, before I introduce some books, I would like to at least define the terms that I'm going to be using. So speculative fiction is usually an umbrella term that involves a lot of other genres. That's horror, sci-fi, fantasy, basically I believe anything that sort of takes a concept and extrapolates on it. Uh, Margaret Atwood, who I will be including in this uh, video, basically said that to her science fiction is something uh, that is included that doesn't already exist, while speculative fiction is a way of extrapolating on something that already does exist. So that could be something like a dystopia or uh, taking uh, genetic engineering and running with it. Um, and I'm going to be using that term because, to me, I think that a lot of people, when they hear science fiction, tend to think of aliens and spaceships and time travel, and less about usually the core idea, which is about um, taking a concept uh, in our everyday lives and magnifying it and um, trying to look at it objectively. Uh, this is something that Ursula Le Guin also mentions in her Left Hand of Darkness book, where she says that science fiction is often another way of telling the truth. That you're not trying to predict the future, but you're trying to think of what could happen uh, in our society if you're to take a small element of what we already have and expanding on it. And the main reason that I tend to like this genre is because um, I think that this is a really nice way of having a sort of fiction novel that um, is beautifully written and intricate and develops its own ideas, but that you still have grounded in some sort of um, society or something like that. Um, so it could be like a general fiction that has one little twist in it, and I absolutely love that. So without further ado, I will introduce some books that I absolutely loved. You'll probably recognize a lot of these, and if I've done a review on them, I'll of course put a link down below, because they tend to be the books that I usually read the most. So the first book that I will be talking about is a book that you probably recognize. I have mentioned this in previous videos, and that is The Giver by Lois Lowry. This is a sort of dystopian, utopian um, novel about a 12-year-old who is in a vaguely communist style society where everybody has a job that they do, um, and at the age of 12 they are decided based on their personality what job would best suit them. However, as he is doing the 12 ceremony, he is, isn't picked with his peers and is instead uh, given the job of the receiver, where the giver is given um, is to give him memories that cause pain or otherwise uh, chaos in a perfectly happy society. And um, so this is sort of his reaction on discovering the idea of knowledge. Uh, the reason I particularly like this book is because, first of all, I read it when I was about 12 years old, so it was absolutely mind-blowing blowing to read a fictional novel like this. Second of all, because because I believe that the main uh, theme behind it is philosophy and the idea of knowledge and what happens when you achieve a certain level of knowledge. So that was a really cool book to put in a young adult book. The movie is also coming out, so I'll be watching that fairly soon and doing a review on both of these. The second one is one that I discovered while working at a bookstore. This is Never Let Me Go by Ishiguru. Ugh. His books are actually fairly well known because they are often made into well done movies, but I don't think a lot of people realize who he is. Um, the movie had uh, Carrie Mulligan, Andrew Garfield, and Keira Knightley, and it is basically supposed to be a memoir of someone remembering a love triangle between them and their two friends. Um, and you, at first you think that's all it is, it's an English boarding school and it's sort of these really great uh, detail-oriented memories that they are reflecting on. In reality, what you find out is that they have been cloned from other people in society and are basically being harvested for their organs. But that is not the main theme of this book and is instead just another thing that they have to live through. The third one is uh, Kafka on the Shore by Murakami. 
this is a book that I'm pretty sure a lot of booktubers have talked about. Murakami is definitely an amazing author and he's had a couple of books recently come out that have done really well in North America. Um, he would be what I would consider to be a true sort of speculative fiction novel because it is incredibly surreal and you might have a fictional book that you think is just about a guy going to a library and then you discover fish falling from the ceiling or falling from the sky rather um and so he puts a lot of elements in it about time and people and bizarre dreams and that sort of thing and i feel like it would take me a very long time to actually analyze what the main theme is and um even then i'm not sure if that would be correct but the fourth one is one that i just recent did recently did a review on, that's The Left Hand of Darkness by Ursula Le Guin. The main reason that I included this in the pile of books is less because of being necessarily blown away from the narrative or how it was written, and more about just the general concept of putting um, gender aside in a society and seeing what happens. I think this is also another great example of speculative fiction or science fiction, where you take something that would be considered normal, like a fantasy novel, and putting a small twist on it to see what would happen and what would change. Then I have Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury. Uh, the list would not be complete without this book. Um, this was interesting because I think it's supposed to be a dystopian book about the future of media and books, uh, and so everybody always talks about this when it comes to the concept of reality television and how much we rely on um, entertainment. The main reason that I included it is because this was written in the 1950s and Ray Bradbury took the concept of television or entertainment and extrapolated it to the point where he wondered what would happen if uh, we relied on it so completely as part of our entire entertainment and what would happen if books just disappeared. Um, and uh, I think this is really cool because as a book it, it doesn't just talk about the evils of television or the brilliance of books, but it instead also talks about the loneliness of knowledge and what would happen if you did read in such a society. Because his ending has is not about the glory of libraries. Then I have Brave New World by Aldous Huxley. Um, amazing book. I picked it out of a library just willy-nilly and absolutely fell in love with this. This is a utopian book about what would happen if people were given happy pills and basically given a very pleasure-filled society. The reason I fell in love with it was just how much detail was involved, just how rich it was, and how it really had less to do with the sort of fear that authors have about society and the future um, and more about just playing with concepts. I think I also just really liked it because it deals with sexuality um, because I believe that people are given um, birth control pills um, so they're freely allowed to do whatever they want. Um, so that is really cool. Then I have Slaughterhouse Five by Kurt Vonnegut. Um, I'm including this because I think that this is a staple, um, regardless of how you like or dislike his uh, writing style. I don't particularly like this writing style because I find it confusing, there's not a lot of detail, and the narrators change quite a bit, but it also deals with um, traveling and aliens, but in a sort of what would happen if aliens were just kind of a part of us. Um, so it's not like people suddenly going on adventures and more about um, how their life would change if they had to go through certain situations. Lastly is Margaret Atwood's Oryx and Crake. Um, Margaret At Atwood is incredible and definitely needs to be part of anybody's speculative or science fiction bookshelf because she is an expert at taking one element and one fear that people have and running absolutely wild with it. So this book in particular gave me the heebie-jeebies. I didn't like sort of how it ended or the the lessons behind it, but I found it to be incredibly prudent and the fact that she had written it in 2003 when a lot of this technology was first starting, especially computers and that sort of thing, and the fact that it is incredibly relevant today um, definitely says quite a bit. And the reason I wanted to include this is the fact that Margaret Atwood, just in general, 
needs to happen. All right, that is everything for you guys. So I hopefully you guys enjoyed that video and let me know in the comments down below if you agree with my definition of speculative or science fiction. Um, and if there's any books that you would include on sort of staples for books that anybody should read, especially if they like these kind of books. Um, so of course, like it and subscribe if you liked this video and I will talk to you guys later.